assalamu alaikum welcome back uh, to quantify consolidation whereby the compression of the soil occurs we have two important parameter one is the amount of consolidation represented by the magnitude and the rate of consolidation or how fast or quick the consolidation has occurred so the amount or magnitude is generally quantified in terms of cc that is compression index or cr that is recompression index and the rate of consolidation is generally given a uh, controlled by the permeability of the soil and the compressibility of the soil so how quick or slow the water can pass through the voids and the interconnectivity of voids define the permeability and the compressibility of the soil means that how soft the soil is if it is already consolidated or not then in that case uh, the consolidation rate of consolidation may be different so it is generally represented by coefficient of consolidation given by cv so we'll be focusing on cc most of the uh, time in our geotechnical engineering two while solving some numericals so consolidation these cc cv and the other coefficient which are listed over here would be determined uh, through the laboratory testing in a consolidation meter or audiometer as you can see the setup over here we have already done this in our geotechnical engineering one course um, certain plots are uh, plotted and we can obtain the uh, av that is the coefficient of compressibility from the slope of delta e versus uh, sorry e versus p plot similarly e versus log of p plot who can yield us the compression index cc and uh, the strain versus load plot its slope can give us directly the coefficient of volume change and they will be correlated mv and av may be correlated through their void ratio using this correlation uh, stress history is very important. A soil can be normally consolidated soil <coughs> and it uh, may be a clay deposit that was further deposited or overlaid by new depositions over the years. So for hundreds and thousands of years, we might have a lot of fresh depositions occurring on top of it. So every new uh, um, I mean load is greater than the history of the load the clay has already experienced. So um, if this is the load that clay was previously experiencing every time the load is outside this regime on the right hand side of sigma dash p so all fresh depositions means that your soil is normally consolidated and with every new application of uh, a new load uh, the soil would continue to consolidate further so the pre-consolidation pressure is generally equivalent to the present effective overburden pressure or slightly more than that so we call that soil as a normally consolidated soil an over consolidated soil on the other hand would be a soil of this sort whereby for hundreds and thousands of years you might have some ice age deposition or maybe a very significantly large building that was placed there so once it is removed and you wish to construct something smaller uh, in magnitude than the previous load then actually you are on the left hand side of this pre-consolidation pressure which was the highest pressure applied to the soil layer in its history in the past so you are actually dealing with an over consolidated soil that has already seen much significantly large load than the previous than the uh, present load so generally the present effective overburden pressure is lesser than the pre-consolidation pressure and we quantify or we generally uh, define them in the form of OCR which is given by the ratio of the pre-consolidation pressure and divided by the present effective word overburden pressure on the soil. So OCR equal to 1 means a normally consolidated soil greater than 1 uh, and the less than 1 is over and under consolidated soils respectively. Under consolidated soils are the ones which are undergoing consolidation settlement. And the consolidation is not yet complete and equilibrium has not yet been reached under the overburden load and the pore water pressure are in excess of the hydrostatic pressure currently so the process of consolidation is still continued that makes it an under consolidated soil the first case uh, when we try to solve the numericals compared to this is um, the <coughs> Generally, this is our um, consolidation loading path or curve and uh, the slope of this new fresh loading 
curve is actually given by CC. This is our pre-consolidation pressure. So soil has already seen this much load when we are testing it in the laboratory. And um, if it is uh, the new loading position is uh, ahead of sigma dash P, then we, we are dealing with a normally consolidated soil. So loading continues in the form of red. So we reach, we reach to the final point um, over here after increasing the loads. So this is our delta E. This is our delta sigma. And uh, CC may be directly computed from this simple expression of delta E over log of, um, uh, I mean, sigma dash V naught plus delta sigma or delta uh, sigma dash V naught. So from here, delta E can, can be computed. And using this delta E in this simple expression, we can directly calculate the consolidation settlement. So we have all done this in geotechnical engineering one. That's why. Uh, I think you're already familiar with these formulas. Uh, you must know these formulas and you must know their uses. So most important things are these stresses, which is the present effective overburden pressure. This is the new load that has come to the soil. And this is the present uh, overburden pressure. CC is the compression index. E0 is the original or initial void ratio and H is the thickness of the soil layer that is being consolidated. The second case of an, uh, over consolidated um, as you can see that the load being applied is well before the sigma dash p it increases and it ends up again well below this range of uh, value of sigma dash p so we can compute delta e from here we can compute um, the final pressure that is a combination of sigma dash v naught plus delta sigma and our final expression for the consolidation um, is a consolidation settlement is given by uh, the CR because we are in the recompression range and we haven't crossed the pre-consolidation range to enter into the um, uh, this uh, this compression range, new compression range, fresh compression range. The last one is uh, the case of the over-consolidated soils. Uh, this previous case was under-consolidated soils and now the over-consolidated soil. So soil becomes normally consolidated by the end of the consolidation and uh, we have crossed the pre-consolidation brush point. So now we are dealing with two different curves, so two different slopes and in the formula now we are going to use CC and CR together. And that's our final formula looks like, uh, which is uh, C involving CR as well as CC. So you must know that your uh, current or the final load or stress on the soil layer or the middle of the soil layer is beyond the pre-consolidation pressure and this is where both slopes of the lines this is a different line and this is beyond this point it is a different line they're both of them and their slopes will be uh, used uh, for the computation of the settlement that's a summary of uh, the consolidation theory and the relevant some of the relevant and the very important formulas I would urge you to please, uh, if you can memorize them, just memorize them, uh, but we will see if we can allow them uh, to be taken to the examination on this particular sheet. But this sheet should be available with you all times uh, while solving numericals and this is very helpful, this summary. Now quickly moving towards a practical problem before we uh, reach uh, or approach the end of the class. So a stratum of normally consolidated clay of 7 meter thick. Whenever you get a problem, always read a problem carefully and come up by making the um, the free body diagram of your problem. So it's located at a depth of 12 meter below the ground level. So it is 12 meter below the ground level. The natural surf moisture content of the clay is 43%. And its liquid limit is 48%. The specific gravity of the sol solid particles is 2.76. The water table is located at a depth of 5 meters below the ground surface. The soil is sand above the clay stratum. The submerged unit weight of the sand is 11 kN per cubic meter and the same weighs 18 kN per cubic meter above the water table. The bulk unit weight of the clay is 19.5 kN per cubic meter. It should be saturated because it is under the water table and it is consolidating and we all know that consolidation only occurs for saturated soils. The average increase in pressure at the center of the clay layers 
120 kN per cubic meter. So in the previous formula, delta sigma is directly given to you now that is 120 uh, kilopascal. So you need to calculate the overburden pressure in this particular case. So estimate the expected settlement. Now reading through this statement, we can draw the free body diagram. So first of all, the natural surface level and 5 meter below the natural surface level with dry sand having gamma B equals to 18 kN per cubic meter and the water table is located 5 meter below the natural surface level. Then we have got the clay layer situated at 12 meter below the natural surface level that is given with this black line and the clay is given with this uh, brown line and the distance you can see is total 12, mm, 12 meter from the natural surface level and then the thickness of the clay layer uh, I've done this because with the free uh, body free handwriting, uh, sorry, free body diagram. Um, so the the it's not according to the scale. So saturated clay, as I mentioned here, because it is under the water table, this is a saturated sand again. Its bulk unit weight is given, submerged unit weight, and its saturated unit weight is given over here. So as you can see now, this is our free body diagram, and uh, the. Uh, Additional stress at the middle of the clay layer is given over here. And so we are interested to determine the overburden pressure at the middle of this clay layer. So we can use that in our calculations to compute the consolidation settlement. The most important step is to draw the vertical stress profile. And you have already learned this in your previous classes with Sarat Sham. So we are interested at stresses over here because the unit weight changes up to this point. Then we have got a different unit weight up to this point for this layer. And lastly, for this half of the clay layer. We have got a different unit weight so we can compute the stresses that is 18 times 5 for the first layer adding up with the 11 times 7 for the second layer and then adding it up further with the third layers a uh, submerged unit weight weight which is 19.5 minus 9.81 times half of the layer so the total sigma dash v naught or sigma dash naught is I'm turning out to be 200.9 kilopascal this is our case of normal consolidation because there is no mention of the pre-consolidation pressure. So we can assume that it's a normal consolidated clay and we are going to use this very simple correlation that is the, for, for the first case. Over here CC is given by 0.009 times liquid limit minus 10 as you can see in the formula sheet that I just showed you. And then we have got CC calculated 0.342 uh, using this simple correlation from geotechnical engineering 1 physical correlations class uh, we can calculate E naught for the given condition of saturation SR is equal to 1 W1 is given to us that is the natural moisture content of the clay layer and the liquid limit is also mentioned over, over here and the specific gravity is given 2.76 so putting these values into the correlation and solving it we can get the answer of 169 millimeter is the total consolidation settlement for this particular case now as we have already seen these uh, definitions so i'll quickly go through to our next slide um, and now we've got only the problems uh, that are simply those which you have already done in your geotechnical engineering one and they are more most more or less uh, relevant to the one that we just solved in this video so please uh, and, and also the free body diagram is given to you with all the markings and everything so all you need to do is to calculate stress at the uh, within the middle of the clay layer and then you can use your understanding of the consolidation theory to compute the clay is normally consolidated case and for pre-consolidation pressure just compare the present overburden pressure and use these values of CS and CC to, um, to compute the consolidation. So please solve these problems. The third problem is also very simple. Um, solve them and you have to submit all three problems by resolving the first one as well and before the start of the next class and in the meantime if you get any problem then we can discuss this in our class um, in our one hour class maybe so you can request and we can have uh, that covered in our class so this is the one uh, we, we already solved in geotechnical engineering one so please open up your notes from that class and you can see quickly that how we can solve as i said earlier that we are more interested in using cccr and uh, and the relevant numericals and we are not we will not be dealing with the time so i, I leave the time to you just get your understanding from your technical engineering one and solve this thank you so much these are the references
now we can have question answers in our class thanks for watching video allah hafiz